All right, welcome back, folks. Now we're going to see recursion in three different angles. One, the definition. Two, I'm going to tell you that you should trust it. And uh, I'm also going to prove to you that you know it already. Okay, so first of all, definition of recursion. So as you see here, the recursion definition says recursion, noun, see recursion. <laughs> see, that was the, whole, the loop with the, okay. Um, the actual definition says an algorithmic technique in which where a function, in order to accomplish a task, calls itself with some part of the task. The word function is a little tight there. It really means a procedure because it doesn't have to be a function in the purely functional sense. We know what a function is, right? Inputs, only one output, no side effects, no state, all that stuff. You can recursively write a procedure, a block also. So that's also OK. There normally are two parts. There's a base case, and there's a recursion case. In the recursion case, as we saw in down up, there is the make it smaller, divide part. There's the invoke, where you call yourself. We did all of those pieces in my, in my down up. And there's the combine part. Okay, So it's base case recursion. Recursion has three pieces, which is divide, invoke, combine. Okay, And at the bottom, as the bottom bullet says, depending on the particular problem, each one of those four parts could be really hard or really simple. Could be that the base case is the hardest part. There's also, by the way, the base case and the base case return value. Like, here's where I stop, and here's what I do when I stop. That's kind of two pieces also, OK? So you already know it. You don't know you know it, but you already know it. This is a delightful illustration shared by some of my friends in Israel who have basically taken tons of pictures that all capture, and, and, and quotes, and ideas of recursion in life and in lore and shown you that if you understand a single one of these particular images, then you knew recursion. Okay? Some of my favorites are in the top left, number eight, in the top center, number eight. That really looks like the final 16 pairing of the NCAA tournament in basketball, or any final 16 tournament. Okay? Um, there's a beautiful Escher print in the top right. There's a house within a house within a house. Um, two down below that, number four, is the Matryoshka dolls from Russia, in which the dolls, like, like Toy Story, the dolls within the dolls within the dolls. I, I had those when I was a kid. They're amazing, OK? So I knew recursion at, as, at the age of three, because I, I remember, like, oh, this is so cool. They keep those smaller dolls. Same idea. If you've seen the cat in the hat, where the hat, he pulls off the hat, and there's another, there's another little teeny guy here. And he pulls off a hat, and he's got a thing there. And he pulls off his little teeny thing there as well. Um, the phrase, what's a king? That's a number, uh, I forget what, number 10, I guess. A king is a son of a king. It's true, the oldest son of a king is a king, right? Except, how about the first king, right? So there's a base case question you want to ask in the same natural way that you're asking about when does that recursion stop. Um, the bottom right is a picture of how rabbits multiply. We're going to actually see that next, next time. Um, so there's some recursion here. One of the things you're going to notice, by the way, that there's a phrase I've used before called a fractal. And this is a fractal. This is a self-similar picture. Okay? This is called the Menger cube, which is I took a cube, and then I kind of cut out the middle kind of cube of butter rectangular solid size middle part. I did that from this side, and from this side, and from this side. And if I think about the cube being divided really into kind of 27, like a Rubik's cube, 27 smaller cubes, 3 by 3 by 3, I'm kind of taking out the middle you know, from each direction. Okay, so I took out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yielding 20 remaining cubes. And each of those 20 remaining cubes, subcubes, I did the same thing. I took out those middles, the butter size guys, leading a lot more. I took out the small of those. And so you see the print is exactly that. And what's beautiful about this particular 3D print is if I slice it isometrically, you get this gorgeous star shape, which I'd never seen before. I never thought that. What would you slice it this way? You get this really pretty picture. Okay? The Menger cube, an example of recursion. If you've seen this before, then you know it as well. Why should you trust the recursion? The idea of trusting the recursion and the big idea is the base case tells you when to stop. Okay, So you're going down, and the base case is usually pretty easy. The base case is defined with, when does the problem get so simple, I need to not do any work at all. I can just return the value in instantly. So in down up, it stopped when it was one letter. <clears throat> in the countdown we, example you may have seen, you stop when you're at 0. You count down to 0, and you stop at 0. In this case, you stop when you, you, know, you can't cut those holes anymore, maybe. right? That's how this recursion would stop, when it's too small for my lathe 
to be able to cut the holes anymore. Okay? In the recursion step, you have three stages, divide, invoke, and combine. Divide, the problem is smaller. And now I'm going to invoke myself. So trust in the recursion means that I trusted that the code I'm writing, the larger code I'm writing, works. Even though it doesn't, as I'm still writing it. But I'm trusting that it works eventually. I'm going to call myself trusting that when I'm all done, I'm going to work. And so when I give myself a smaller problem, it'll actually do the right thing. We saw this in my down up. Okay? So trust and recursion really means, and it's a, it's a leap of faith, I'm going to call myself, even though right at that instant, I'm still half formed. My house doesn't have a wall there, and I, don't have an, I haven't called everybody yet. Okay? So trusting is really a big deal, and is totally the key to writing recursive routines yourself. I'm going to call myself, even though I know I'm not done yet. But I know when I'm done, I'll be done. Like I know when I finish this, that'll work. I hope it will. Okay? Practice is going to make this easier, by the way. So in summary, closing out, what you've seen so far is abstraction is a really big idea. A, it's not part of the CS principles material. We wish it were, but it's not. But it's part of the Beauty and Joy computing course. So if you're taking the Beauty and Joy computing course, you'll see it at that final exam, but you won't see it on your CS principles final exam, CS principles exam for high school students. Recursion is one of our two biggest ideas in this course behind abstraction. Okay, so abstraction, biggest idea. Recursion is the second biggest idea. So it's so powerful, we think everyone should see it, which is why we have it as in CS in BJC. Again, formally, it's just base case, recursive case, which itself has divide, evoke, combine. It's most useful when the problem at hand is kind of self-similar, where you need to be walking down a tree, or you need to be drawing a pretty picture that will grow bigger and bigger and bigger, or you're kind of handling uh, a tournament in which every tournament really looks the same. Okay? So it's useful when the data structure or the problem at hand is itself self-similar. Okay? And the key idea is it's no more powerful than iteration, the normal way you'd, you've learned so far to process through things. It's just often cleaner and simpler and faster to write that code. And I show a beautiful picture from XKCD, which is two people, they're playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And, and, and one person says, your party enters a tavern. And so then one person says, I gather everyone around a table. Uh, I have the elves start whittling dice and get out some prominent for, uh, some, some parchment for character sheets. And he realizes they're gonna he's going to make, in this mini pretend game itself, a Dungeons & Dragons playing system. So he's like, stop recursing. Stop recursing. And if you've ever seen, uh, when they have a new building, they'll often have a small building. In the new building, they often have the small architect's model of the building, but they put it in the building. So now you realize that in that same place in that building should be itself a smaller building, right? With the, all right. All right, so that's recursion, folks. We'll see you next time.